You've worked hard and it finally paid off. You made a loop and it's an absolute banger. Good job, Timmy. Keep it up. <clears throat> so, are you gonna arrange it now or? <laughs> <sighs> Look, Timmy, I can relate. I know arrangement can be a little bit intimidating sometimes, but it really doesn't have to be. As long as you follow this three-step arrangement formula, you should be good. And if you're curious, this arrangement formula is really simple. It just involves becoming Eminem, Shakespeare and a wizard in that exact order. Don't worry. It's all gonna make sense in a second. I'm also going to share with you the three rules of arrangement along the way. I guarantee this will help you to finally get out of the eight bar loop. <laughs> now, now, Timmy, can't you see that is working? Now go to your room. Huh. So, the first step in our arrangement formula is the Eminem step. Now, why did I call it the Eminem step? Because freestyling, of course. In this step, I want you to become Eminem and freestyle. So go with the flow, don't think too much. Make the first draft of the arrangement as soon as possible. It's important to get to this step as quickly as you can after doing the composition, because the ideas are still fresh in your head. But how does one Eminem in practice? I'm glad you asked. Let me show you. So here we have the loop that little Timmy made earlier. I have to say Timmy's pretty good at this, but as you can see the arrangement view is empty right now. And if you're asking what these markers are all about, we'll get to them in a second. But how I usually kickstart the arrangement process is by asking myself what the core of the track is. What's the most important element holding it all together? And for techno, which is what I make most of the time, it's usually the kick and the bass. So I'll drag out the kick and the bass throughout the whole timeline. And actually, I think I'm also going to do the same with the synth right here. So I drag them out through the whole arrangement timeline so that we have something to work with. Because, you know, even Eminem freestyles on top of a beat. At least, usually. And here we're going to be covering the first out of the three rules of arrangement. It's, you guessed it, the 8 bar rule. Scientists have recently discovered that the average person's attention span in the 21st century is only 8 bars long. Nah, not really, I'm just playing. But having something happen every 8 bars is indeed usually what works best on the dance floor. Pretty simple, right? So here's where these markers come into play. I've placed them every 8 bars so that I can see where a change should theoretically happen. Yes, I'm saying theoretically because the 8 bar rule is obviously not a dogma, it's more of a rule of thumb. And for some people the markers could be creatively limiting, but I personally find them helpful. And to plug it back into our freestyling metaphor, you could kinda say that the markers are like a metronome for freestyle rappers, kinda. Not really, but... So I'll start listening to the track and just do what feels right, no? I think we could drop the shakers in right now. Yeah, that feels good. I like that. the bass for a second. Yeah, I like that. One thing I like to do is to take away the bass for a second, but keep the high drums playing. And then maybe I'll build some tension with the filters and stuff like that. And then when the bass comes back, I take away the hats. So you know, this step is all about creating musical moments like this. So again, do whatever feels right, don't think about it too much for now. Play with adding elements, taking them away, maybe play with some automations, all that jazz. Now I'll roughly arrange the track for a bit longer until I have a considerable amount of material. 
a few moments later. So I've arranged the track for a bit. It doesn't have to be perfect or entirely finished. What's most important is that you're no longer stuck in the loop. And now it's time for step two. Now you have to become Shakespeare. To arrange or not to arrange. I'm not big about medieval poetry, but I'm pretty sure... <laughs> Shut up, Timmy. Go back to your room. <clears throat> But I'm pretty sure Shakespeare was a writer, right? He wrote stories and stuff. So that's what you gotta do now. Become a writer. Ask yourself these questions. What story is being told in my arrangement? Where are the breaks? The drops? In what order do these sections happen? And how can I make all of this make sense? Basically, immerse yourself in your own arrangement and interpret it in your own way. This might be a bit abstract at the moment, but what I basically want you to do in this step is identify and emphasize the musical moments that you've created in the draft. Either by making the energy changes more drastic, by creating transitions, or even adding new elements that you think would complement the story being told. Basically, make your first draft more intentional. Hopefully, it's not too difficult going from mom's spaghetti to Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> so, Shakespeare in practice, let's do it. I've listened to this arrangement once more, so now I can adjust it to my own taste. And to make the orientation in the track a little bit easier for myself, I can also re rename the markers that I've set up here. So this is a little break, and this is the little drop that we've made. So now, knowing that this is the break, I can add, for example, the claps right here to add some tension. <laughs> We can also play with automating the reverb. And here I have another rule for you. It's also a rule of thumb, obviously, and it's the rule of announcement. Basically, try to announce a change before it actually happens. As we said already, it's to emphasize the changes that are already happening in the track. So this could mean, for example, adding a small double kick variation before a new element comes in. Taking away the bass for just a little bit. Another thing I like to do is to add rising reverse swells. For example, you can do it with the hi-hats. You can reverse them just before they get introduced. Yeah, same goes for any other element. Or another simple way is to automate the reverb just before a new section. You can automate the decay time, or if you have a reverb on a return track, you can automate the amount that gets sent into it. You especially want to emphasize the most important elements in your track, like the breaks and the drops. And when you emphasize the drop, it's usually then called the build-up. Huh? See? Now you get it. And if you're still struggling to create a song structure that you like, I recommend you to learn arrangement through analyzing other people's songs. So you're going to need to find a reference track similar to what you're making and analyze every single aspect of the arrangement. So things like how long the breaks are, in what order do the different sections happen, and so on and so forth. Awesome! Now it's time for step three, which is to become a wizard. So tell me, what do wizards do? Magic? Yes, Timmy. They do magic. And what else do wizards do? Dogs food? No, silly Timmy. They sell candy. Huh. Maybe they do also commit tax fraud. I want candy. No, Timmy. No candy. You have to eat dinner first. So, now you have to become a wizard. You have to sell candy and do magic. Maybe just don't commit tax fraud, alright? Okay, but what am I even talking about here? Well, by candy, I obviously mean ear candy. And by magic, I mean... I don't know, magic. Just go fucking crazy in here. Now let's do this in practice. Let's add some ear candy, some details. In this step, we're going to add even more transitions and effects. And here's where you can add sounds that are more felt than heard. Sounds like impacts, crashes, and if your track doesn't already have some textural elements, consider adding them in this step, if it fits the vibe, obviously. And yes, I also have a rule that I want you to follow in this step as well. Even wizards need to obey the rules. Though, they don't always do. Don't commit tax fraud, kids. <clears throat> the rule in question is that it's not released because it was finished. 
it's finished because it was released. Let that sink in for a second. The quote comes from Be The Lick, who also has a great YouTube channel on music production. Definitely check him out. And Be The Lick, if you're watching this, I do want that on a t-shirt. Yeah, no song can ever really be finished. There's always something new to add, isn't there? But you have to identify when to say stop and release the track out into the world so that you can move on to the next one. If you spend too much time in the wizard stage, I can guarantee you that you're gonna end up hating your own work. And I'm speaking from experience here, trust me. So don't be too much of a perfectionist. And yes, before you ask, I am going to be taking my own advice and this track that I've made here is going to get released in a couple weeks. Now, if you don't know how to actually release your music, I recommend using DistroKid. I wasn't sponsored by them or anything, it's just that I've tried many different music distributors and DistroKid is just the best one. Plus, you can get a discount if you use the link in the video description. Uh... Wait, actually I think I forgot to tell you about step zero. Yes, there is a step zero. It's more about composition than arrangement, though there is some arrangement to it, I guess. Nonetheless, you have to apply it if you want your track's arrangement to be engaging. So step... Oh... Sorry guys, I completely forgot, it's Timmy's dinner time already. Yeah, I, I guess I have to go feed him now. Um, so to find out what step zero is, you're gonna have to go watch this video instead. I'm out, see ya.